Welcome back, everyone. Nick and Lex here. Thank you so much for being here today with me to this new episode of Music with Nick. I know a lot of you guys were like, oh my God, just stop, go to bed and shut up, get some rest. But hey, I can't help myself. No, but honestly, I feel a lot better. Yes, my, you know, the voice is still a little bit off, but I truly feel a lot, a lot better. Like I've been up for the last two days and um, I mean, sleeping and up and doing things you know, I feel great. So, you know, I'm already, it's just like, I guess my nose, you know, or my voice. So please don't worry. I feel a lot better. Honestly, I know when I did the last two videos, like I looked horrible, my lips were all chapped. And so, but yeah, but you know, so I'm moving on. So this is a marathon for Lee. Thank you so much, Lee for sponsoring this marathon. I'm super excited because this is all about progressive rock here. And um, if you guys know Lee, he has an amazing taste in pretty much everything. I mean, we've gone to, uh, you know, uh, to Genesis together. Um, uh, I mean, the musical box, but we've seen Kansas. We've seen uh, Peter Gabriel together. I mean, we've gone to quite some concerts together um you know so yeah he has very good taste so this is more of psychedelic prog marathon so um um yeah so i'm super excited i love psychedelic prog i love i love psychedelic rock so um uh, yeah so here's the list of songs we're gonna do today and of course i'm gonna add something at the end of course um, which is going to be, well, it's a surprise. Let's do, let's do, um, let's do it as a surprise. So we're going to start, um, with the band called Frupp and there's a double U and a double P. So I think this is, this is the way you pronounce it, Frupp. And this is called Decision, um, from the album called Future Legends. This is from 1973. Let's see what's going to happen. So we're going to do two songs from that album. The next song is called Graveyard Epstel? Epstel? Epstel. I think it's Epstel. Um, if not, please correct me. I get a kick out of your corrections, you know. Um, everyone's corrections, you know. Sometimes they're so... Also, the way you kind of, like, um, you know, use a little bit of sarcasm in them. It's all good, you know. It's all fun. Now, this one is interesting here. Because... Um, Wait a minute. Is there something missing here? Because it looks like there's a song missing. Give me one second. Um, <laughs> the thing is, um, Lee sent me a list. Oh, no, there's nothing missing. Okay, cool. I just this one. Let's put this one down here. Okay, there's nothing missing. Um, Lee sent me already the, the list, you know, in Spotify. So I just had to drag it into my Spotify and we're done. So I've just wanted to make sure. Um, so we, after that, we're going to do a song called uh, Moldau from the band Pell Mel. I've reacted to them before. Um, this is from the album Marburg, 1972. And Lee was like, you have to guess who's on the keyboard. So that's going to be a challenge. I love when you guys do this because let's see if I have the, you know, the ear to guess who it is. Then we're going to do um, these uh, from the band The Nice, the song America. This is from autumn 1967 and, and spring 1968. This is the album title. Um, let's see. It doesn't say the year, though. Um, I'll figure it out once I get there. And then I'm going to do a surprise track at the end, okay? All right, so let's get it started. Um, again, thank you so much for being here, for subscribing. We're about to hit... Um, 87,000 subscribers. I can't believe it. Um, thank you so much for subscribing, for being there, for liking the videos, for, you know, adding comments, for all that knowledge. Is in, I mean, if I was not, you know, hosting this show, I would definitely subscribe to Nick and Lex because just the comment section is very educational. Like, just in the comment section... I learn all this stuff, you know, and I, I see all these names and everything I could listen to. So for younger audiences, this is quite um, 
a tool to, uh, to learn, you know. Okay, so let's uh, let's start off here with Decision by Frupp. And uh, here we go. So some psychedelic pro pro uh, progressive rock. Here we go. that you know lee doesn't really care if i interrupt because he knows these songs in and out he just wants to know what i think and i think this is an amazing that i mean the way it started wow it sounded literally like bands that i listened to but like death metal not not really death metal but you know progressive metal and maybe i don't know i could also say yes a little bit of like bands of course um gentle giant you know uh proggy or like very progressive older progressive stuff but now this change into like this almost jazzy kind of like dum, 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 and um very very interesting it says here one of the hardest working progressive bands to end up languishing in relative obscurity frup was begun in 1971 etc 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 that's what's on spotify so it's always kind of nice if you pull these songs up yourselves um after the video you can also read some more into that if you're on if you don't know about them okay uh, let's keep going very interesting change of like rhythm and, and and style here from the beginning very like aggressive and then it turns into this like almost jazzy kind of like thing To happiness, it is your own decision. crazy or am i hearing the beatles now that i mo know more of the of the beatles i can hear this instead of interpreting as jazz it could also be like well maybe it's something like more beatlesque you know um and um a little bit of renaissance in there like this doodle -dip, doodle -dip, you know these arpeggios very cool i'm gonna i'm gonna try and not interrupt so much you know Yeah. 
my god there's so much that i have to say first of all um this is amazing <laughs> okay first of all but like the styles i love the guitar solo there also very dramatic that lick the diddle 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 diddle. i even do that lick myself it's just a very famous lick that you know that just works in every sit scenario you know like whatever you play um because it's very dramatic um i think that this is the one like um Like you can do it like you know that kind of thing um but also this like that reminds me literally of the first album uh by ingrid malmstein that that song that basically got me into ingrid malmstein called far beyond the sun please check it out lee you're gonna love it everybody else check it out it's like the it's like the it's like the entire ingwe malmstein style in one song everything he does pretty much like all the techniques i mean he did create some more but this is like his where he was at in the, at, at his highest point right in his playing i guess he was only 17 18 years old but this is written like very baroque like and yes i mean baroque as in baroque music <laughs> if you know what i mean <laughs> this is um for one of my friends of course one of our um sponsors um who made a joke the other day um uh, but yeah it's very you know classical in classical music inspired we, i hear like a lot of bach i hear a lot of beethoven and and, and stuff like that you know and when I hear Renaissance, I hear those guys, you know, because that's the scales they're used, you know, Mozart, uh, that kind of, um, you know, and not exactly Mozart is like, I wouldn't call him like Baroque, but yes, um, uh, just arpeggios and scale heavy. But the whole thing was just so cool because it was psychedelic. It was dramatic. It had a lot of good movements like the first movement very very crazy stuff very very you know then the whole beatlesque thing or i mean it sounded kind of jazzy but also when you really think about it you know the beatles the way that we the way they composed and then it turned into this whole neoclassical you know um interlude really really cool i loved it very very i can't wait for the next song also on the longer side, which I love, this is a uh, graveyard. E P I S T L E, ep, epistle, I think. So correct me if I'm wrong. Let's give it up for them. Here we go. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say about the song, but it was just fantastic, wonderful. Thank you so much for getting me on these guys, um, Lee. So here we go. <laughs> Again, the neoclass, the the baroque, you know. I mean, I think there's an easier position. I. But I mean, that's the idea, right? I, and then. kind of classical scales like they're so effective in rock music um let's just start from the beginning because i severely interrupted the song so but let's go <laughs> Thank you. 
so good. Already sent them to Alexia. She's gonna freak out. this so much this is the kind of music my mom used to play me and i was like first like i was like okay this lady is obviously like crazy but then i got it you know this is obviously like egyptian inspired scales like uh, for example have you ever have you ever heard the uh the intro of egyptian dancer by aldi miola check it out it's gonna blow your mind this song Ah, it's so good. Um, but this is what the rem what rem this reminds me of, of a lot of styles, and I love how heavy it got there. But in a very weird way, it reminds me of the song in the year twenty five twenty five, which is very dark. I remember my mom playing the song to me, and I was like, "Okay, it's pretty good," you know. And then she translated the lyrics, and I was like, "Oh my god!" You know, it's so dark because it's so dystopian, and it's so like it. That's literally the first time I was like scared of the future when my mom told me this you know because of the lyrics um check it out if you haven't heard that song i, I want to i still want to do a reaction with alexia to the that song i don't even know what band it plays but in the year 25 25 crazy stuff all right let's keep going this is very good <laughs>
there's so much goodness in here like this is like literally iron maiden like what they were doing like the, the like this i don't know i can't get the rhythm but, but. like scales is so much fun to do and you don't really hear it that much in rock at that time i mean i think the first band that i heard uh like myself you know i mean i'm talking for myself the first the first time i heard this was um renaissance and then um and i was like okay i recognize this you know from from the classical like music that that we used to listen to because I was just brought up only with classical music in the house. It was constantly playing. And we had someone um, who was constantly playing the piano, our neighbor, and uh, he was he became a classical pianist. So we I would l literally hear like... Doo -doo 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 -doo, like I would hear him practice like eight hours a day and it would also just stick to me. So uh, that was actually very useful, you know. But um, and then I think later on during the years, I think, uh, you know, bands like Deep Purple and uh, that we now know a lot more. But I knew like, I think one or two songs and I heard Richie Blackburn that was like, that's neoclassical playing. And then, of course, Ingwie Malmsteen. He was like, oh, this guy li literally plays the guitar like Nicola Paganini, you know, that kind of stuff. But I just love the bass here is very strong. The keyboards, the guitar and the drumming is super cool. Like it's very, it's very proggy, but yes, it's it's not just progressive rock. It has that psychedelia, which is really cool. So um, can't wait to show this to Alexia. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> good i mean this band is obviously they're highly underrated which is so crazy but it, it's just you know that's just what we're dealing with we i think we've always dealt with this kind of stuff like um i think the only band that gets away with this kind of stuff nowadays is dream theater because for some reason they're so popular i really like them um but i don't understand why they got into like in the mainstream um i guess they're considered progressive metal but they're not really that met i mean they're they are heavy and they and they got heavier but that's like i mean and then compared to this i mean 
yes they're i guess bigger now but they started i think they really had to work really hard to get to where they are now and they got this huge recognition and now and they play songs like this for 13 to 16 minutes and stuff like that you know but i guess maybe back in the day this was just a bit too extreme for people i don't know why i mean i'm sure that people that listen to classical music and jazz were like this is amazing but it's just difficult to put this on the radio people just don't understand sometimes the complex uh the intention of complex music i i know you know I was not even, you know, into that kind of stuff when I was younger. I had to, you have to learn it and you have to kind of get into it. Otherwise, it's just like, what what's happening? Like, there's so much happening. And um, like when listening, some of my friends, I've played them instrumental music and they're like, are they ever going to start singing? You know, and I'm like, you know, because if they're not singing, it's not a song for them, you know. So they, they don't have that. Some people just don't understand the uh, the intention behind instrumental music or like, what is this like elevator music? You know, there's they're not singing, you know. So, yeah, it's just weird. So, yeah, it's just, you know, it's a thing. So, OK, so now. So Lee told me I've, I've heard this band before. We're going to listen to uh, Moldau by Pell Mell. And so I'm supposed to guess who this uh, keyboardist is. So I I'm going to do my best because um, let's see what's what year is this 72. So let's just see. Let's just listen. Okay, here we go. After the song, I'm going to guess and then I'm going to look it up. <laughs> Okay, one moment. I do have to do something really cool. All right, we're back. So let's just, you know, um, let's just start from the beginning um, because I want to listen to that intro again. Beautiful fluid here. And, uh, but let's just restart. Very relaxing this water and the flu. right when I listen to the chords but let's
amazing beautiful violin beautiful flute playing let's see who this um keyboard player was and then since it was not like it was just the chords you know the open chords like by richard wright like this like like he has like a way of like And I once learned great gig in, in the sky, um, the chord progression, and it was just very like, I don't know, very open and I don't remember, but I love this guy's violin playing. It reminded me a little bit of this band that I, I did a marathon of, Mago de Oz, uh, which is funnily enough, the Wizard of Oz um, in Spanish. And there is this album by um no there is this like video that it's a fan edit where you watch dark side of the moon along with the wizard of oz and it's like thinks perfectly it, I, we should react to that honestly I, I think we've seen it already once but just like in front like but i loved also um what was he doing um oh yeah this theme this I mean, that's not what he was playing, but it reminded me of El Condor Pasa, no? Right? Um, okay, now let's look up who the keyboard If it's Richard Wright, I'm going to laugh. Because, um, let's see. <clears throat> Marburg. Let's see. Wow, it's not even on um, Wikipedia. Proc Archives. It is on Proc Archives. Hans Otto Push. I don't know. I don't know Hans Otto Push. Let's see. Let me see. Maybe he was Palmer book. Hmm. Maybe it's not this song. Okay, let's try Frupp. Let's see Frupp. So I was totally off. Let's see. Maybe it's for the band Frupp. Maybe I misread. Um, Frob, who is on the keyboards? Somebody that I know, Stephen Houston. No. Then the night. Okay, now we're gonna play. The next song is gonna be the nice. Let's just listen to it. So I was wrong. I definitely don't know. Um, that guy, that keyboard player, Otto. Hans Otto Push. He sounds German. <laughs> he does. He's, he does. Um, okay. Let's go with the Nice band. No, the band called The Nice. And this, this is America. And I do want to look up the year. Because that one, it says 2009. <clears throat> Let's see. The nice. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? What's that? I'm sorry that I'm taking so long. America. 
Huh. It's not on here. Like the I the nice I hope it's not spelled nice. No, that would be different. Um Okay, here we are. Wikipedia and the nice album. Nineteen sixty nine. Okay, now now I know it's because I I didn't give you guys the year. It says autumn nineteen sixty seven and spring nineteen sixty eight, but the album was released in sixty nine. Here we go. West Side Story, right? Da 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 America, da 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 America. It's so good, man. And um, it sounds a little bit like Emerson, like and Palmer, the sound. Let's check it out. <laughs> This is the song that I was supposed to guess because if I have to guess, this is Keith Emerson. No, no questions asked. And like only he does that. Um, let's see. Oh, 
Okay, 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 okay. No, Lee actually warned me um about this. So I think it was this song that I was supposed to guess. Okay, let's look him up. <laughs> let's see. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, yeah. I mean, who else sounds like that on on the Hammond? Keith Emerson. Wow, cool. So he was in this band before Emerson, like in Palmer. Let's see who played on the the second album. Also, Emerson, um, Keith Emerson. Wow, what a cool band! Really, really cool. Definitely very psychedelic and prog, of course. Let's keep going. This is really good. And now I want to add something because I want to add something by Warner. I could do yes. I think I should do yes. Because yes is now bought by Warner. So every time you guys choose a yes song, yes. Um, but I could also do Dream Theater. Now I don't, I know that Lee doesn't like Dreams, Dream Theater's vocalist. Uh, like Alexia. Same. But there are some good instrumentals. But let's keep it 70. So I'm going to choose a yes song now. I'm going to fail miserably by choosing this song. Because I don't know what to play by yes, you know? So it's either going to suck horribly or be the best thing. And then you're going to be like, why didn't you play this to Alexia? So I don't know, maybe I should do Dream Theater <laughs> at this point, you know? Let me think about it. Let's go. such a good band we have to do more of this i'm sorry but um yeah <laughs> i'm definitely gonna do more made be by request or just us uh, you know like alex has to listen to this um okay so i'm not gonna do dream theater because dream theater is we're already in the 70s here and people that listen to this stuff are not gonna appreciate the dream theater too much like like why would you why did you have to put in 
stuff 20 years like from 20 years later i mean because dream theater is from the 90s and 2000s um but let's just keep it in 1971 from the yes album i'm gonna do something shorter i've never heard a venture and if it's like the most amazing track ever we'll do it again with alexia okay you know how this works i'm just doing this so pretty much this is like lee's marathon that was it right which was beautiful fantastic i loved it but i i need something by warner brothers because they changed the laws once again and they scan all the songs and if we only have songs by other record companies they might block it if that occurs i can dispute um, because of the yes song, the entire file. And if they say, yes, you know, you can play it, then the whole thing gets unblocked. That's how it works. That's how I figured out how to unblock marathons. Otherwise, half of our videos would be blocked. Literally. So this is like a little, you know, this is the only company that allows reaction videos. So, um, yeah. So, um, let's do a venture. This is from the Yes album, 1971, and here we go. And if I've heard this before, sorry. Chris Squire, man. But the pick, of course. Wow. Okay. I don't know why I've, we've never heard this before, but I promise you, I promise everyone, we're going to do this again. Alexa and me, only this song on YouTube, okay? I promise you. Um, this was too good to, like, not do it, you know? This, I mean, this lineup here... Um, 
even though I know it's not, um, now I know it's not Ellen White on the drums. Um, it's, um, okay. So it's Ian Anderson, right? Then Chris Squire on the bass, Steve Howe on the guitar, Rick Wakeman keyboards and, um, it's, um, I mean, he played with Holdsworth, right? Um, <clears throat> let's see. Ah, I just don't remember right now. <laughs> um, but it's not Alan White. It's the first drummer. I'm super famous. Uh, what's it? Different Strokes. Um, ah, I have to look him up. Um, I'm so mad right now. My memory is failing. Um... All the way on the bottom for some reason because he was the first. Bill Bruford, of course. But yeah, this was amazing. This whole marathon was just a feast for the ears. Thank you so much, Lee. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. This was amazing. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to edit this right now because I wanted to. I want to release it right now, you know. This was so much fun. Thank you so, so much. I'm so happy I didn't do Dream Theater. Oh, Lord. Um, um, thank you, God, for guiding me. <laughs> so, thank you so much, guys, for watching. This was so much fun. Please leave your comments below. What did you think? Did you know all these bands? I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're going to know yes, but all the other amazing bands that we listen to, I mean, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know about... Let's. Okay, I was actually going to do Dream Theater. I, I can't believe I changed my mind. Um, so the nice Pell-Mell Frupp. What did you think? And also that amazing Yes track. I, I love Ian Anderson. I love his the, the way they harmonize Chris Squire and him. It's such What a combo, you know? So thank you again so, so much for being here, for watching this. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel like the video or dislike it you know if it's not wasn't good let me know comment below what you think and i'll see you guys in the next one